Hello everybody, Kono Pro here coming at you with a quick video on some demo. I want to go over some pointers on demo, but first off, I'd like to ex express to everyone how important demo is. Um, it sets the tone for your project, and you know if you do it right, then it can go smooth and safe, and you know you keep your structure protected, yourself protected, and the environment protected around your structure. And so you know. People think they can just come in and slam walls down and do this and do that and break things, get all crazy. You know, once you have yourself, you know, all the safety pointers taken care of and everything's all ready to rock, then yeah, you can. You can go in there and demo and stuff. But if you do it in a controlled way, it can be done really fast, efficiently, and um, safely. Okay? So first pointer I'd like to go over is your electrical. All right, what I'm doing right now is I, I went through to that sub panel and I turned off all of the breakers. I left one dedicated breaker um, on in the kitchen. Now I'm going through to verify that there's no other plugs tied into that breaker and uh, make sure all my plugs are dead and all my light switches and everything else, they're, they're all, I checked it earlier, they're all dead. There's no power, you know, verifying everything. So that's the first step. First step is power, make sure that you isolate one plug so you can run all your, your extension cords from that one plug, but you don't want to overload that plug either. So be careful with what you're doing with that plug. Um, run your power from there, power saws, whatever you're doing, and from that plug. And that way when you demo everything, you keep the structure safe by not having you know live wires while you're smashing through walls. And if you see here, I'm taking off this wall sconce, and when I do, I leave the wire nuts. I put them back on even though the power is off because if someone else comes through one of your partners can come through or someone can come through and you know turn on the breaker or something like that next thing you know there's a wire you know that's arcing and causing a spark and then it can cause a you know fire or whatever you don't need that issue nobody does so I always like to just double check make sure I keep it safe and just put the wire nuts back on there um, you know that's so that's first step electrical isolate your power make sure you're good and then second thing I always like to do is your gas. You gotta go through your gas main, you gotta turn off your gas, all right? You don't need gas for any part of this demo project. We're gonna be remodeling this whole house, adding a second story, so there's no reason for us to have gas right now. We're actually gonna be relocating the gas main as well. So um, we're cool on gas. We just, we, we you know, we ter terminated the gas to the house, so there's no gas running in the house. So gas is dealt with. That's number two on the checklist. Number three, Let's check out plumbing, all right? So you can go and you. what I like to do is I get my plumber out and I have him turn off, basically disconnect everything underneath the house and leave like one hose bib connected. I tell him leave, you know, leave one hose bib connected outside so that way I can have access to water on the, on the property while I'm doing work. If I need, you know, water for dust control or water for, you know, any of my tools or whatever it is for cleanup, basically do the whole job, then you want to have one water point. You don't want to terminate all your water to the project. So, but you basically want to have, you know, no water in the pipes that are in the structure that you're going to be demoing on, okay? So, that's, so that's number three, right? Plumbing. So, make sure you isolate plumbing, make sure you terminate water, and then you can turn on everything so all the water will drain out your pipes. And then that way you know when you do demo and you hit a line or something, you're not going to worry about crazy water splashing everywhere, right? All right. And then, so, then what else we got to worry about is, is basically safety. And that's that's actually number one thing. That's the first thing. So I always recommend you wear a respirator. You wear a full body suit um, with a hard hat, of course, eye protection, ear protection if you're using power tools. Um, there's even a thing called a sock that you can put on um, over your head before you put on your full body suit. And I recommend that too because that protects your neck from getting dust and debris on it. And when you're you know, pulling down these ceilings and it has this old blown in insulation and years and years and years of dust, you don't want to be breathing that in. So you want to protect your clothes, you want to protect your body, you want to protect your lungs. So always wear a mask, eye protection, gloves, full body suit, hard hat, whatever you can do to protect yourself and your workers, please do it, okay? And um, you know, and then after that, just rock and roll. And then after that, you can sort of figure out, you know, the process of the demo, how you're going to do it. You know, come into the structure, look at it and be like, okay, I got electrical isolated. I got plumbing isolated. I got gas isolated. I got safety locked down. We're ready to rock. Then you can start looking at the structure. Like right here, I'm taking off all the casing. So I'm going to go through 
take off all my wood trim, basically all your base, case, um, crown moldings, any kind of wooden built-ins, cabinets, um, things like that, basically finish work. You take out the doors, the door jams. Um, you can cut those door jams in half with a sawzall and they'll just pop right out. Um, once you do all that, then you can start rocking on, let's say, take down, then once you have all the wood down, then you can start doing the lath and plaster. So you put this pro the process in your mind of how you're going to do it, and then you execute it that way, right? And then it goes through a lot smoother. Everything's, everything's awesome. You'll, you'll start working and everything will be going really smooth. And so what I'm going to do basically here is I'm going to be, you know, removing all of this lath and plaster, gutting the whole interior of this house because we're going to be adding a second story and I need to expose all the framing. We're going to be um, removing walls and stuff like that. But I need to basically open up everything and see what I'm working with. And not only that, I want to upgrade the structure and install some insulation, you know. So we're going to be insulating the whole, whole property too. So that's another reason why we need to gut all the walls. And these walls are um, old beadboard. Um, with plaster on it. And when I say beadboard, you know, that might not be the exact technical term for it, but it's like basically half inch drywall um, that they may had back in the day and it had a bunch of holes drilled in it and then they add plaster and basically trowel on the plaster over it. And that is really thick, heavy duty interior plaster that's basically like a cement. You can't even like screw into it or hang pictures. I mean, it's a bummer. So, you know, I always, if, if it needs to come down, you need to insulate the home and it's worth it to do it then great. So that's what we're going to be doing on this project. And you'll see here in a little bit, you're going to see me getting crazy with the sledgehammer. And um, as far as tools go, I recommend a flat bar, um, you know, framing hammer, sledgehammer, you know, a little mini sledgehammer and a little cool little um, pickaxe. If you have a big pickaxe, cool, because you'll find out that pickaxe, when you use a pickaxe to like remove the lath and plaster, it's amazing. It, it really helps you out. I have a little mini pickaxe that I'm going to be using and it works great. And um, also too, make sure waste management, trash. You go over, you figure out, you, you figure out the process of trash. Like this property um, in particular has, um, you know, multi dwelling structure in the back that um, they, they need to be going in and out of the parking lot. There's no really room for me to drop off a 40 yard dumpster. So what I'm gonna have to do is bag everything. So I'm gonna put everything in bags. And what's cool about that is that I can just call the dumpster one day and then I can just basically have everything bagged in the house, you know, piles in each room. And then I can have them, you know, stationed right next to the windows or the doors and then just wheelbarrow it all out to the dumpster. Have the dumpster dropped off one day and I can just load it up in about four hours and then have the dumpster pulled out of there. And then all my trash is out of there in a day. By bagging it, it makes it a lot more convenient. It keeps the dust down for your neighbors. Um, and it's a lot it's a lot safer to work in a cleaner environment when you bag everything And then if you don't get all the trash out of there and you decide not to have a huge dumpster You can you know you can make multiple trips to the to the dump with your little pickup truck or whatever you have If you have everything bagged, it's a lot easier to get rid of a lot of people say just get a dumpster and drop it off and just throw the trash in Sometimes it doesn't work like that You know if you have a tight location and tight areas where you can't really do that Then you have to figure out what you're gonna do with the trash um you know, that's another part of demo. So, all right, everybody, I hope you all, you know, enjoy this video and, you know, learn some stuff from it and gain a little knowledge as far as demo goes. Um, you see how I'm rocking with that pickaxe right there? If you get a little hole in it, like I cut a line with my sledgehammer, with my sledgehammer basically across and made that, that uh, horizontal line, and then I got my pickaxe in there, and then you can pry it basically against the framing and then just pop it out. You see that? Put it against the framing, pop it out. Boom, big pieces will come out, big chunks. It's killer. The bigger the pieces, the easier it is for you to bag it and, and get rid of it. All right, everybody? Um, you know, I, 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 hope, I hope this video helps you all. Hope, hope it, you know, gives you a little bit of knowledge. Like I said again, I hope I'm not being redundant. But um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We'd appreciate that.
there it is everybody after you basically get all the plaster removed you go through and clean up all the nails and uh, make sure everything's cleaned up use a HEPA filter vacuum clean every, everything up really good and get rid of all that nasty dust um, that's basically it everybody I just want to give you a little taste of this job like I said I'm gonna be doing multiple videos on this project so uh, look out for the next one and keep your heads up high everybody you all have the power you're all strong and amazing people thank you so much Please subscribe, Kono Pro out. Peace.